everyone, and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks on this Tuesday evening. How do you like my uh, new backdrop here? This is what we call a virtual backdrop, and so it looks a little funky, I think, around my face. I'm not sure what I think about this just yet, but it beats looking at that kind of ugly uh, office space <laughs> that's usually in my background. So I'm, I'm experimenting with things to make these videos look a little bit better. All right, today was an uneventful day weather-wise. This was not the case. Hard to believe this was 14 years ago, but on this date back in... 2009, we had a whopper of a January snowstorm, 11.3 inches worth of snow on today's date back in 2009. I mentioned on 21 News at 6, it's actually kind of hard to get a big snowstorm of this magnitude at this time of the year. A lot of our really big ticket 6 inch plus snow events happen early in the season and late in the season when we have more moisture available to us. This time of the year, it's our coldest time of the year. The air is usually pretty dry and systems have a hard time wringing out these Big time totals, but that was not the case back in 2009. All right, we've been talking about the lack of snow this winter. One way to look at it is comparing this winter to last winter, and uh, we'll kind of zoom around here. But in our local area, of course, just about everyone, with the exception of maybe our southern part of Columbiana County uh, and southeastern Lawrence County, just about everyone in our TV viewing area has seen some amount uh, less snow this year than through today's date last year. Now, we've actually had a little more snow than at this time last year in places like Columbus, Dayton, Cincinnati, and a couple of hours to our east over towards State College and Williamsport. Of course, the Buffalo area and areas downstream of Lake Ontario up in uh, northern New York, closer to Watertown, they've done really well this winter, a lot more than at this point last winter. We've also had a snowier winter across parts of the upper Midwest, including parts of Nebraska, the Dakotas, southern Minnesota, and of course it's been a bonanza of moisture coming into California and the uh, parts of the Sierra Nevada mountains have had a lot more snow this winter than uh, through today's date last winter. Specifically at the Youngstown Warren Airport we've had 9.2 inches worth of snow so far this winter. Again, as I oftentimes remark when I mention these numbers, I, I tend to get people who say, there's no way we've had that much snow. We have at the airport, and don't forget we had a little bit of snow in November, a few months ago now, but we had a couple of inches of snow at the airport in November, but this is still a paltry amount for the season, 9.2 at the Youngstown Warren Airport, which of course is a snowier location typically than a place like Canfield or Salem or Columbiana or certainly down towards East Liverpool. But uh, yeah, 9.2 is three inches shy of last year's totals through today's date and just about 17 inches shy of the uh, average through January the 10th. All right, wild day once again out in the West. This is a 36 hour, I think maybe 48 hour radar loop uh, I loaded up here for the West Coast. They dealt with hail in San Francisco this morning. There's been wind damage, there's been flooding, there's been impassable roads thanks to all the snow. And it's not every t every day you look at these storm reports map for California and you see this. This is you know a map that we would sometimes see in the middle of the country or down in the southeast. Uh, lots of wind problems and, and uh, flooding problems. And as I mentioned, uh, they had hail producing thunderstorms earlier on today near the Bay Area. All right, back here at home, pretty ho-hum day today. Clouds, a little sun, temperatures in the upper 30s this afternoon. We'll start to see a little clearing of the sky for a time tonight. But then the clouds win the battle again on Wednesday. But kind of like today, it'll be just kind of an uneventful day. Much like today, I can't totally rule out a late day sprinkle. But the better chance of a shower comes tomorrow night, and then especially into the daylight hours on Thursday as a warm front tracks our way. Thursday afternoon, pretty close to a washout with periods of rain, but still mild. Kind of an April-like day with temperatures getting into the 50s. But then here come the changes. Now, this whole system looks a little bit faster than it did uh, at this time yesterday. So I think we'll see the transition over from rain to snow, maybe even by midnight Thursday night. Will this make for a tough morning commute Friday? I doubt it because temperatures are not going to plummet like a rock. I mean, we're going to drop down to about freezing. And so some untreated surfaces might get a little bit slick by Friday morning. I think we're going to be looking at a lot of mostly wet road surfaces Friday morning. Flurries and snow showers will continue to come and go throughout the day. All right, I put out a snow map. Sometimes we don't put out snow maps this early, but confidence is higher in the overall outcome uh, than some storms that are uh, two and a half, three days out. I think they'll do pretty well up towards I-90 with some lake enhancement. Cleveland to Ashtabula to Erie, heading up into southwestern New York. Uh, some places are going to see a handful of inches, maybe even six inches plus, once you're up towards Erie and Jamestown. In our TV viewing area, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't going to be much, but we haven't had much snow of late. I think an inch or two, slushy inch or two, will be pretty common in a lot of our central and northern viewing area. 
I think we'll be hard pressed to get more than an inch off to the south down in Columbiana County. And what about impacts? You know, amounts are going to be modest. Will there be impacts on the roads? Will there be impacts for schools and things like that? I don't think this is going to be the kind of situation that's going to uh, cause a lot of school adjustments because, again, I'm looking for mostly wet roads Friday morning and into Friday afternoon. Uh, power outages shouldn't be a big deal at all. Uh, roads and travel. One concern maybe as temperatures finally get below freezing and stay below freezing, in fact, drop into the 20s by Friday evening. Um, lingering snow showers and flurries. At that point, once the sun goes down, the snow will have an easier time sticking. And there could be some issues on untreated surfaces at that point. Before then, again, I'm not going to be able to rule out some, some issues, but I don't think there'll be a, a widespread travel issue across our region during the daylight hours on Friday. Last two weeks, every single day has been at or above the average, within a degree or two of average anyway. The coolest days have been just about average. And over the next 10 days, again, we just flirt with average Friday and Saturday with highs near freezing, but then right back to the same old, same old. As we go into the latter half of the weekend and much of next week, we might not uh, uh, be done with seeing a 50 degree temperature just yet this January. I do think, as I mentioned uh, in previous editions of this video, that the pattern will finally change some and turn a little bit cooler during the last week of January, um, right around the 23rd, 24th. Some cooler, uh, some cooler air will finally make inroads for more than just a day or two, I think. Um, but until then, boy, it is just uh, it is quite the midwinter thaw. We'll have more on the longer range in future editions of Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching tonight. I'll see you right back here, same time, same place, on Wednesday.